you're listening to Polymatic.media, episode 71 for August 2020. Welcome to the Polymatic cast. Hey, John, how's it going? Pretty good. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed supposed to read that, that everyone with the, the links, the, the, that, that thingy, you want me to read that thingy? <laughs> you know what? I, I'm going to delete this and never, ever put it in again. <laughs> uh, well, now I forgot. I don't know what it is. What was the format? So anyone who wants to follow at home and along, what, it's polymatic.link slash episode 71? No. Is that what it is? Polymatic link slash show 71. Okay, got it. So now I made it difficult for you to edit that out. <laughs> Hi, John. How are you doing for the last two months? I'm annoyed um, right now. I'm very annoyed. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, it, I know that part of that is not just me <laughs> in this moment. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure right, right, right now it is you. Yeah, yeah, right now. Uh, well, you you were having some adventures with a monitor, right? Did that, did that ever oh, finally show up? Last week was annoying. Yeah, I uh, I spent about uh, an entire week basically getting a monitor. I uh, ordered one same day delivery, and then uh, it didn't show up. <laughs> yeah, and then I ordered another one from another store, and it didn't show up either. So yeah, but I finally I... got it last night after the week work week was done mm -hmm. or the workspace that I wanted. Uh, you know, clearly that's not usual, right? No, no, I it's mean, usually pretty good. But uh... yeah, I, you know, so it's sad for me, but most of my ordering stuff really, if we're talking about electronics and we're talking about like serious electronics, like, you know, things like a, a mixer board or whatever, um, I'm generally going to order from one of two places. Um, I will check it on Amazon because they have l a massive amount of warehouses with massive amount of inventory just sitting around waiting for people to buy stuff. Um, and the general delivery on Prime here is pretty good. Some things will take a few days, right? Understandably, um, like take a day or two to like the order goes and gets processed by whoever's actually going to fulfill it. And then you know, then the process of it being shipped and making its way here. And sometimes the the shipping tracking info is a little misreported. Um, so if it's, yeah, you know, coming but, from Amazon, it's fairly on point. Oh, the, the um, Amazon is usually very, very sparse. You used to, right. Oh, it's on its way. Okay. When, it's, right. when is it going to arrive? Give right. me the, the time, you know, so I can, you know, be there. Yeah. So, <sighs> and, and so, Eddie, I'll... All of that said, I've been fairly good with that, and then B and H on the occasion. Um, mm. Yeah, so uh, for the most part, they're fairly pretty good, unless it's like a super big package or something. There might be plus minus one day where I got it the day before, and it says go be on Friday. I got it on Thursday, and then Friday morning it says your package has been delivered, <laughs> and I'm like, I know, I already opened it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Also, so, support, support uh, the the customer support was really really bad. Mm -hmm. Had some very bad experiences. So for the people that live in the Netherlands, don't buy from Cool Blue or Bowl. <laughs> <sighs> Nothing but trouble. It was yeah. not not great. So yeah, that was fun. So uh, yeah. I I heard you got a new job. I did. I got a new job, and I started buying new stuff. Um, not, not directly related to the job. I just finally got fed up. And then, you know, the realization of the new job, I, uh, going to be working at home for a while, at least probably through the bulk of this year, if not the whole year, um, as they slowly determine how they're going to bring people back into the office. Um, so does it, how, how's that with like your colleagues? Is it like hard? Is it like hard to reach them or is it like, um. How do, how do you, how's, how's your experience with that? So I can tell you, so let me, let me, let me go back one step where it, it was set up well, but no one utilized it. So the last job, um, they finally got smart about their sort of licensing, um, at a company level. And so one of the things that they started in that process, especially if you're doing living in sort of office enterprise and Microsoft world, um, there are some value adds when you buy at a volume license for the whole company 
you can get things like the Office 365 stuff. So this enables a ton of things. Um, and then, you know, along with your your security, your login, you can enable that stuff at that level. And then it turns on a whole lot of cloud-based things as well as um, options for software, native software to your system. Um, and so one of the value adds was that the Office 365 stuff is actually is actually pretty good, and I preferred it over the native um, client mail client running on Windows. Um, I don't mean with operating system; I mean Outlook that comes with Office that's installed locally. So I would use sort of um, the Office 365 Outlook version over over sort of the normal Outlook client. Um, and then it would also allow me to have access to other more, you know, office centric services like the OneDrive, which is a value add to me. But um, and it made various other little things like when I was going in my development environment, logging into that pretty, pretty easy. And then um, because uh, I tried to get sort of the company or at least our uh, sort of the division and the group that I work with to use Slack. Um, all of the team members loved it, but my boss hated it. He hated I had a solution better than what they were doing. And then the company did this sort of upgrade with the office suite and volume licensing and even for development stuff for developers like myself. So you were so, using their, uh, their what was the name of that thing for, for Office 365? They have like a Teams? Teams, right, teams, which yeah. I was just going to tell you about. So Teams we set up and it's actually, it's a little clunky um <laughs> at times there's a little some some quirky things like it's clear that they they did very quickly replicate and add some value to what slack was doing um first thing it, it's not restrictive so because you know it's part of the office licensing um it integrates with the OneDrive stuff really easily and it it, it pivots in the perspective of office and enterprise um, which again is there's a heavy value out there. Okay, so that's wonderful, and um, but very few people were using it among the team because sort of leadership and the sort of people, the project managers, their approach was pre any of these collaboration tool like Slack or Teams. So everything they did was email or come stand in your cube and bug you. Mm -hmm or pick up the phone and call you, or you know, even if that resulted in me sending them back to their desk, consolidating their requests in ceasing said boss in an email, they wanted to go old school. And so they had already sort of wired all the team members to do the same thing. So everyone's just tossing email around or they're just shouting at each other, turning around in their cube and talking to each other in person, which is fine, but none of that collaboration tool. So while it was set up correctly and it was there to work and you could put sort of common team things and put, you know, files and scripts for the team in your team channel that you created, let's say, for the development team versus the project managers. Well, it was all there to work well. The company and the culture was wired in such a way that it was um, very derisive towards it and didn't really utilize it well. They only use it in parts. So with that said, fast forwarding to a whole different team um, and a whole different job, this group does sort of a bunch of collaborative bits, but they they exist in uh, of using stuff in a way where they don't really have that sort of liquidity of of Office 365 enable licensing and all of those sort of cloud-based collaborative tool services mm -hmm. integrated. We have, you know, Office 2016, like local. Um, I have Outlook local on the work laptop. But what I don't have is I don't have access to sort of the larger, grander use cases. Um, Without adding some additional complication, there was a secondary laptop I had to use for a short period of time. Uh, all the developers had 
and we had Teams there, and we would talk to each other over Teams, and we would use the Office 365 bits on on because it was a completely different um, domain and, and company that we yeah. were doing some work on. And so we would use that very well. Um, the only thing is the sort of um, the VPN connectivity with that company was like crap. Um, and And so Teams was unreliable because we would actually talk to each other like over the you know voip and you know teams was very unreliable so then you know my normal standard office laptop you know they uh they use cisco stuff so they use all the cisco classic things of well i mean it's modern but they use the you know so the webex and the jabber you know chatting so it's it's sort of like its own thing. Um, I mean, it's not that it's not modern. It's just that, like, they, Cisco or WebEx, clearly had built a whole set of solutions on their own, um, mm-hmm. kind of like what Zoom did. And uh, they're really isolated from the world, and, like, they have simply have ignored or not followed or not studied sort of good UI standardization of how everyone else is doing stuff today. And it's just because they're, you know, they're in their own sort of wall garden. And so we do that communication and it's a little clunky. It's not really as integrated. Um, you know, it would be nicer to have teams in a stable situation. But what I will say is when we do our meetings, at least WebEx is real stable, right? Because they have a dedicated WebEx server. Like the company is sort of, already has a legacy perspective invested in this this system. Um, yeah. I would be surprised if they change it. So uh, that is kind of what we do. And so it sounded like to me prior to walking in the door and starting. Well, not that, walking in the door. <laughs> well, not literally walking in the door, metaphorically. Um, it sounded like to me that they were always in the office. Um, and the company does have that kind of point of view that everyone has to be in the office. But now everyone doesn't have to be in the office. So it's sort of a change of culture for everyone but me. Um, And so they're utilizing these tools that they're already utilizing anyways, but they're just utilizing it from home. So they're uh, they're adjusting pretty well, as far as I can tell. I mean, people are accessible, but people will also call me on my cell phone, right? Bosses will call me on my cell phone. Mm -hmm. Happens. Uh, yeah. Even for a company like like where I work, uh, mostly we've been on we've been online as long as I know the company. So working yeah. from home is not strange. But yeah. Um. So uh, you've been uh, you've been working there for about a month now. Uh, I think I concluded three weeks. So yeah, three weeks. Yeah. Okay. We're getting there. Yeah. I started basically midway into the month. Hmm. So uh, last month we didn't do an episode because I was really busy. Uh, I'm still very busy, but you know, it's like uh, I just, I just, I needed some weekends not doing things. Yeah, and uh, yeah, not doing the Palmatic cast and having to do the editing is also a thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not going to be a case for me. My upstairs is a bit of a. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a war zone. It's like I'm moving out and moving in at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've been uh, reorganizing your workspace. Your yeah, I mean that's that's what a lot of the new buying of things was about, mm. um, and completing some projects that I've been meaning to. So for the th- the thing here is that you've you've been doing that. I've been doing that too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. um I I I got to a point where I was like. Yeah, I've been sitting in this room the entire day now. Now I want to go do art or I want to play games or whatever. And I'm still in that room. Got right. to a point where I, I didn't want to be in that room anymore. Yeah. So I um basically that's why I bought the monitor. It's a four K monitor, but I still need to get like a an adapter for uh for display port. Because uh, apparently my Mac only does uh four uh, K sixty FPS on display port. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Display for what one two or one four? How old is the Mac? Does that? I guess probably only the like this year Macs will probably be 
you know, supporting one for. Well, I, I need one too, so it's right. fine. But I, I just need an adapter for it. It's just a dongle. <laughs> and I currently use, like, HDMI, which is fine for, like, the, the normal resolution stuff. But at work, mm -hmm. I have two uh, 4K monitors. I don't have the uh, choppiness of the 30 FPS. Mm. So, I don't know. Maybe just, I, um, maybe a monitor thing, I guess. That was part of my setup. I bought a, a brand new large monitor. Um, yeah. So... It was a 30, 34 inch? 34. I, you know, originally I was like, well, all right, you know, mods got the 38, but then I saw the price tag. And so some part of me is like, I got to hold on to some money. And also the weight was too much. And I'm like, I don't know how we'll support that weight on the, um, with like, I wanted to do monitor arms so I could yeah. kind of move things out of the way if I needed to. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, price tag, weight. Uh, I, I, I think I'll get the 34 inch because <laughs> I think 34 inch in my brain, the number doesn't calculate. It's like, it's not going to be big enough. I think it's going to be plenty big enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. I have a 29 inch on my desk here and it's way too big actually. Right. So. I, years ago I had, now they weren't bezel and they're sitting over there because they, they died out of like a power outage years ago. Um, and they're sitting there with a pile of a field studio system over there for things I got a junk. Um, but, you know, collectively, when combined, they're about 48, 49 inches. And um, one of them is, you know, it's like 24 inches, some change. And so uh, it was perfectly fine. I got accustomed after a while to just using one monitor. Uh, and I put stuff to the side, like, you know, file file system like files and folder you know things to drag and drop um but i wanted more of a larger sort of cohesive one one thing that was above sort of 24 inches is perfectly fine for like one thing mm -hmm. right i can edit inside 24 inches perfectly fine um but i have and i do recall when i used to do larger timelines or larger audio editing there's nice value in seeing like what the timing is and being able to scrub farther out without having to do you know shift wheel mouse scrolly thing and mm -hmm. you know it's just easy to be able to see your whole landscape and you literally move the mouse and click mm. it's also, so, also nice for games <laughs> wider screen. Uh, sure i mean that isn't my major goal um obviously when i play satisfactory on it it'll be wonderful but um <laughs> well actually i don't know i don't know how that's going to handle that <laughs> Uh, and I, I do have... What's the resolution on it? Uh, so it's definitely 4K, and it's the whatever the number starts with 38 and blah, blah, blah. I think 1440 uh, is the vertical. Um, and then it's uh, the... You know, I was looking at the Amazon listing, and it says 144 hertz, but when I was looking at the box, it said 160. Um, and I think that might have been with something like G-Sync or something like that. Mm. So. Well, but it's an ultra wide. It's curved. I, you know, I don't know that I care that much about it, but I think it's probably going to make a difference in the situation. Yeah, it was. It's an expensive monitor, though. Yeah, but I, I, I was what I was doing in the past was I had like one monitor to my left and another monitor to my right, and different, uh, different brands. Um, one was sort of bezel-less. The other one sort of isn't. The other one was touchscreen. Um, because I was using it, you know, I bought it, it was color accurate. And then I also was using it for Artemis. Um, and then I would have the laptop in the middle. And so my whole scenario is to remove, remove the laptop, let it just sort of be docked. Right. Wait, why would you even use a laptop? So why didn't you just get a desktop? Uh, because I don't want, I don't want too much hardware. Now, with that said, you know, what am I doing? I've got myself a big monitor and I got myself this and that. But um, I used to do desktops and I, for a number of years, I built them um, and I was in that biz and then I would upgrade a lot. Every once in, you know, every few weekends, I'd like, oh, I need a new video card, right? And I would work, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the power supply out. Now, I was never doing anything like, like Linus does, which is water cooling things. So I didn't have a massive amount of hard lines or 
RGB rewire. I didn't, you know, the thing sat down down below a table and collected dust, right? And uh, and over time, especially down here, the last system, you know, that I that I bought, um, it lasted me fine, but you know, I wasn't financially capable of like swapping it out. So I swapped out for another system and another system, and it was just sort of a mess. And I wanted really just one one thing. Um, and what I was doing was mostly editing. Um, and so I, I bought a laptop, an Ultrabook, a few years ago. It works great, except that 4K is not its thing that it can yeah. master without an eGPU. And uh, that works so You have an eGPU, right? I do, but it's not performant, meaning, um, you know, it's going over the Thunderbolt. Um, now I'm going to rewire my desk, so maybe I can I can improve that problem. <laughs> but the way that really stop. the really the way it works is it really wants the eGPU wants to be the master of the Thunderbolt, right? So that's going to give you. Get... I'm going to give you some advice because the thing is. If you get like a desktop machine, you have your laptop for stuff you need to do on the go. But for now, you don't need to be on the go because there's nothing to be on the go for right. because everything is closed. Yeah. So getting a desktop, you got a desktop for the podcast stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So even that machine, and I got the, uh, I read the specs, even that machine will be very nice for gaming. Satisfactory will play very nicely on that machine. I'm sure it will. <laughs> but it's staying down here in the studio where its RGB is is glowing one little corner of the wall under a desk. <laughs> <laughs> but getting a desktop uh, will give you like... Because you're already in the Windows ecosystem. It's not really like, you know... Oh, uh, get my, my, my foot in the door. And part of that process was eventually the potential of wiring was always in mind wiring this environment down here um for streaming um even though we're we're probably going to be a Skype Skype and Allen in the studio podcast for the rest of time cuz now the group doesn't have to drive here it's you know let's do everything over Skype yeah um yeah so you know, the the point is that I I wanted to do the upgrade so that I had that that potential capacity plus also the old system was starting to get finicky and it's not like it's not like seven years old or anything. I, I sent you a, uh, a picture of my, um, of my uh, current setup. Yeah. I, I might've uh, shared this, but you, uh, you redid your space pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I, I had three standing desks and okay. the, the rightmost was my game PC slash uh, work environment which basically got turned into just my work environment yeah because i took my game pc and turned that into my art pc and then took my art pc out <laughs> and uh yeah so I, I i eventually just reverted back to my old desk i hadn't still had an old ikea desk and which is like a cur like a, a corner desk style mm -hmm. thing and I just put my uh, my monitor monitor on there, and my tablet on there, and then my uh, podcast stuff on there, and everything is on there, and it works great, and it's wonderful, and I don't have to think about work anymore. It's yeah. it's great. Just so, just not having to go into the same room that I was doing work in. So now my my living room has a corner with a a couple of desks on it, and a new four uh, K monitor, and right. uh, it works. Yay. I, um, I'm taking like the, I don't know, I would say maybe 30% of the living room, uh, over that is sort of, um, I, it was basically behind the couch, uh, that points towards the TV. And so I was you kind of, I piled a bunch of filming gear and C stands and stuff into the corner. And that's where it was kind of keeping everything so that I could easily grab it load it up into a car, run it to an Oticon, which is happening actually surprisingly on on today that we're recording on August 1st. Um, and so normally I'd, that stuff would be loaded up in a minivan and I'd be down in Washington, right? And so uh, I, when I needed stuff, it was very easy for me to just turn around and go 
rough, rustle through all the, the gear and pull crap out. So my whole point without running onto a long story and a tangent about it is that I needed to kind of reinvent my workspace in a way that was productive for me. And uh, out of out of sort of pile this, dangle a cable here, hook it up here, my desk got very messy very rapidly uh, over a course of time, especially working at home and having to integrate you know, new gear, new this, new that. The last mm. job, my uh, lap, personal laptop and my work laptop were the same brand. And while my work laptop was a slightly older model, it still worked with the same dock. So it was really just a combination of swapping out a mouse and a laptop and uh, all the same monitors and all the general gear basically worked. Mm. Um, so it was sort of, you know, and then what was behind the monitors was like a nightmare of, of cables and eGPU mm. and things running around. So my plan right now, and it, I will hopefully conclude it, you know, tonight, is to to basically just hook up a monitor with some monitor arms, hook up some of the mounts for for the camera gear and the eventual streaming stuff I'm going to add into the solution when that hardware arrives. Um, and make it as minimal and as clean as a, as a very easy workspace and put the laptops to the side. Um, that includes work laptops. Includes so, so, you're do, so you're doing work. another desk with your work and your play yep. in, so in the same space. The desk that I was living on was this very inexpensive, foldable, but very sturdy um, uh, desk that was, I don't know, I want to say it was like 68 by by 28 inches. Um, and this new desk is 70 inches by 30 inches. I know you're going to do the, the conversion in your head, or you're just going <laughs> to say, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother. Um but, you know, so basically we're, what we're talking here is like seven feet by um, more than two, two and change, but not three, three feet. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I did is I, I, I took all the stuff off of it last night. I took all the gear out of that corner. I pivoted the old desk 90 degrees um, and I set it up. And then what I did is I built the standing desk. That was my e adventure for the evening. Um, and then uh, I got that sort of set up and I bought a couple of monitor mounts, different styles, and I like prefer to pick the one. Now I'm going to load up the monitor on it. We'll do that to tonight on my own somehow. Um, and then I'm going to start figuring out what goes on the desk and what can be run by cable over to the side desk. I yeah. definitely know the printer scanner is going to go on one corner of the desk. But so, do you still need the printer and scanner on the desk? Uh, not on the side desk. Sorry. Is it a network printer? Uh, it's network? wireless. Oh, okay. So, yes, it's a network printer, but it's not attached by wire. And so, so, so do you need um, to keep it there. The existing setup that I have right now with the dock has to be on the desk, um, which means, or. What it has to mean is being close proximity to the laptop because it has a very short Thunderbolt cable run. And these these docks are kind of special. I can't just use someone's, you know, um, where there's power delivery of 85 watts or something off like someone else's dock. I can't use that. I have to use this one if I want it also to be powered by the dock. Uh, so all that has got to be sort of probably on the side desk is probably where I'm going to put it. And then, um, yeah, simply based on that, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put off sort of the mess to the side table. Uh, all the filming gear is going to go underneath the table, the side table that is. Um, and so everything is going to kind of live on the side table and the monitor and the wireless keyboard and mouse will live on the desk. Um, and this will include uh, ability to swap stuff for uh, the new work laptop, which is a completely different brand and isn't going to be compatible. It has its own dock. Can so you just uh, hook up, up. a uh, USB hub to a 
a USB switcher because I have I have one of these at home that I use to switch between the to switch the audio gear that we're doing right. this through between the PC and the Mac because I use the mm-hmm. Mac for podcast recording stuff and the PC for streaming and other stuff. So. Yeah, I I think I probably so my my initial plan in my head was that I was not going to use the big thirty four inch monitor with my work laptop. Um, I I bought a a newer twenty four inch side monitor um, because I wanted to take the one I had upstairs and bring it down here to the studio to sort of upgrade the monitor that was here, which I did. Um, so this monitor here is big and it's nice. But it's the the older side monitor that I had upstairs, so I did some swapperoos. So, without in the particular details, because I'm already just sort of ranting about it, I, I'm <laughs> redoing the space in such a way where a couple goals: um, m- minimalization is kind of as important for me to have sort of a creative, clean space, which includes putting things to the side table like the switch and the laptops. And the pile of hard drives I need for like the film when I need to connect them up and sort of not cramming crap on top of the desk behind monitors. Um, I'm going to connect up a bunch of they're meant for monitors, but you have these monitor arm clamps that you can adjust the height that um, have they surprisingly have photographic threads spawned off them. So I can do some little rod clamps and do some photographic stuff so I can put lights and hook up my A6400 camera when I eventually rig up the streaming gear to it so that Mm. I can sort of my webcam will be my A6400, which will also be how I um, will do streaming things. Um, And then I'll funnel all that into the laptop um until i buy a new one that, that which is, is my going to, future plan that thing is going to cook but you'll well that it'll, out. it'll cook on the side table um and then based on the two monitors i have one of them that was uh, one of my side monitors will be dedicated for um sort of program preview out on the streaming and then also uh easy flip to the switch so that i can just play dedicated on it where before I was always like flipping the the side monitor into a different mode so that I could play on it, that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to just sort of rewire everything in such a way where I can kind of exist in a way that's easy and simple. And it's mostly going to be monitors and mounts on the, you know, the, the motorized standing desk. And that's it. Is, that is, is the desk going to carry it? Uh, it can carry 250 pounds. So I know the monitor, uh, the mount that wasn't that much. So let's say, let's say I was, it's 10 pounds. It's not, uh, like I picked up the table desk, table top, you know, when they delivered it. Uh, and I know that the shipping weight said 50 pounds. And aside from it just being sort of awkward to hold, it was, didn't, I didn't feel the weight at all. I just picked the thing up and I moved it. Um, it wasn't difficult whatsoever. So I don't know, maybe I don't have a good gauge on when I lift something mm. up, like what its actual weight is, but the, the monitor mount wasn't that heavy. And the monitor, I know when I was looking at the, the specs before I ordered it, cause that was a, con- a, a thoughtful concern was something like 25 pounds. So those two things should work out just fine. So it's going to be about, let's say there's, I'm probably going to put about 50 pounds of weight at most on the desktop. Is is your uh, is your side desk is it also a standing desk? Uh it is not, no. Yeah. So how are you gonna wire things up if it's on the side desk? So I'll have the docks on the side desk, I'll have the laptops on the side desk, uh all the wiring and connectivity between my work uh has its own dock, which I'll I'll work into this situation. Um and the same goes for the personal. Um and what I'll do is I'll wire all that stuff up. And then what I'll do is I'll eventually probably put like a hub. Um, and I have one now, but I'll probably get a slightly better one when I can find one um, that sits on the desk. And what will really just run to the desk is um, basically the monitoring cables. So, um, you know, the thing I have to think about is how much of that can I drape, <laughs> right? 
Um, it might turn out that I have to put maybe a laptop in the corner on my at least the personal one or something on the on you should, the desk. You should look into getting some of those uh, cable guide style things with like a, you can wrap it around a cable, like a bunch of cables together. So they stick together, so that they go, don't get snagged behind a monitor. Because you, your monitor yep. desk, your 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 desk is uh, motorized, and if you yep. move it up, and then suddenly it goes snap, and it doesn't work no, anymore. No, yeah. So the the whole point is to make sure that everything has a, a at the minimal Fair, uh, a dangling cool. set of cables that are channeled from that one side yeah. that are floating. I did that with the power last night for powering the thing. Um, I have. Uh, because of the filming stuff and you know when you need a i bought um velcro straps rolls i bought a bunch mm. of rolls where you have to kind of cut them and they sort of self-seal and then wrap so i was doing that I was cable managing uh some stuff last night already um so i intend to put sort of um as many power strips I, I, basically what i want to run is the, the least amount of things to the actual desk itself Right. So for things for display um, and things for where I need power. Right. Um, and most and things should USB be powered by channeling, channeling, mounting, Velcroing, double stick taping um, things. I got to go pick up some double stick tape. I I was gifted a, a hue color strip. Mm. Um, and so, you know, it's been sitting it was sitting down here sort of glowing the wall but i never took the sticky tape stuff and connected it to anything so that stuff has basically popped off so i need to go buy some double stick tape and i was thinking i was going to figure out how i was going to put it underneath the desk so when i turn lights on that at least the underneath the desk would light up uh, not for prettiness sake but also to have some general lighting in case something goes underneath the desk so hmm. So, yeah, so, I mean, I just, I'm thinking about it and I want to, the goal is to try to sort of hack my habits and keep it as minimal. And so I did pick up some other things. Um, I I picked up a new mouse. I picked up a new wireless keyboard. Um, and both of them have a little button you can flip to switch between computers. So um, on the case of the keyboard, it literally has one two three has dedicated buttons for that yeah, yeah, yeah. so i will likely the craft keyboard right yeah i i really do enjoy this thing it is it's real nice <laughs> and i will um i did wire it up for a moment to my to my work laptop so i i'm not using that one right now but i probably will when i'm all said and done so the, does, you does, know, your, the, does your monitor have like uh, different inputs, like multiple uh, HDMI, multiple uh, DisplayPort inputs? So the big one does, and then yeah. the new side one does as well. So uh, what I'll do is I'll run, uh, I'll run DisplayPort from my personal laptop from the eGPU to it, which I was doing before, and then I will run one of the HDMI's from that to uh, the work dock. And then, um, then that would be that. Yep. Yeah. And then somewhere in there, when I hook up sort of the other mounting gear, um, I might do one of two things. I might buy that monitor. Was not, it's not a gaming monitor. It, you know, it's like 60 hertz and it wasn't that much. It was like 200 bucks. And it's actually it's a really nice little side monitor. So it's possible I, I go, go back to the computer store and I buy another one um, to just, you know, not from aesthetics perspective, but just from, um, you know, sort of the optionality. Maybe that's the better monitor. Maybe that big, ugly, not ugly, but the big touchscreen monitor. Maybe that becomes um, the preview down here when I do streaming, you mm. know. Right. Mm. One for the computer. I mean, I have I have like a little seven inch monitor that I was using with you, but it's like. The camera, I look at you, but then the computer monitor where you are is off to my left. So that's why I'm always tilting over there if I'm looking at you. And I'm not looking at the camera with a monitor behind it where your face is. So maybe there's a value add of taking the other monitor arm I didn't like and figure it out and mount it down here to these tables, which aren't really 
like real dust tables and you know figure out how to take that extra piece of resource and do you that should, like you make know? make one of those uh, e-presence devices like a robot with a monitor on it and a camera on yeah and... yeah well i can tell <laughs> for you for all the, the seats um, downstairs in the in the in the studio for all the people that join in you can have yeah. them on each monitor i um yeah so i i don't know i i, I bought a couple of monitor arms um, you know, these things aren't cheap and, uh, the ones that at least could swivel. And I, I bought one that was like, looked like it could hold the weight of something heavy duty. And it, it, it does, but it's not nearly as flexible as the, like the Amazon basic one. That one is surprisingly nice. And I guess I'll find out today cause I'm going to hook up a, I'm going to do a visa film for the 34 inch today. Yeah. Is so. this, do you have the, uh, does it have like one of the bigger ones or is it still small? Small style, like the um, ten by ten centimeters, or uh, I'd have to look at it or look it up. Let me look it up because it's not in front of me, and uh, I got rid of boxes a while ago. Mm. I I was doing that. I was cutting down boxes for the the standing desk table last mm. night. But yeah, so the whole point is that I'm I'm going to what's going to be up on the desk is going to be as little as possible. It's going to probably be the the uh black magic design atm mini pro i have a feeling i'm probably gonna bite the bullet and i'm gonna buy the iso i'm gonna pre-order it because i'm still back ordered on the pro and the, the, have you already paid for it uh i already paid for the pro and they're closed on saturday B H is closed on saturday and so when i went to go try to call them on friday I was like getting onto a phone was like a hundred, it was like two hours. So I was like, well, I'm working. I can't just be doing this and I don't have my personal laptop lit up. Right. So, uh, I might, my pre order the ISO it's, it's like 900 bucks though. And then, um, then I'll call them on Monday or something, or I'll call them maybe on tomorrow on Sunday and then sit on the phone. However long that is, and maybe cancel the the pro order can't you just do uh, that online uh no because i bought multiple things and those things uh, have been delivered and it's back ordered like i need yeah. a, a customer support person that has access to their actual system um okay so we were talking about the basic monitoring arm that i well, got you're... um so yeah 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 Let's find out what dimensions. I don't need dimensions. I know, but you did ask. Yeah, but I was wondering, like, if if the monitor itself, what kind of dimensions of these amount is? Because you have like different versions. You have like ten centimeters, you have fourteen centimeters, oh, you have really? twenty centimeters. Like, it depends on the size of the monitor, which which standard they use. So, not all monitor mounts will go with. Not all Visa mounts will go with all Visa mounts. <laughs> Got it. The the plate that's on the back of the monitor arm is fairly large, mm. um, and I'm looking at what it says here, and it does say, um, okay, I was looking at different, so maybe I got the completely wrong arm. <laughs> that's a very, very strong possibility. You'll figure it uh, out. I, I guess I will figure it out. Um, yeah, so Visa compatibility 100 by 100 millimeter and 75 by 75. So now I need to go. Let's let's do this discovery, so you can hear. Here, did Alan did Alan totally screw up? Because <laughs> I like that monitor arm. Um, so so and so I the monitor whole... arm supports seventy five by and one hundred. So that's yeah. ten centimeters, seven and a half centimeters. Yeah. Let's see. So let's see what, what monitor you got again. Um. So I bought the Ultra Gear LG. And it looks like, just from picture alone, it looks like it's going to be what I need, but I need to get down to the specs. Um, okay, come on. Where do you say something about visas? Visa mounts. doesn't say anything about this. Wait, how, how, this 34 inch, right? Yeah, it's the, uh, it is the 34, the item model number is the 34GN850-B. 
So 34 ultra wide QHD. Then that ultra. Um, looks like the back of the mount is exactly compatible with what I'm going to be based on what I see with the stand clicks into. So, so it looks like they're. I have some bad news for you. Are they they not compatible? Great monitor, but face amount didn't fit. <sighs> uh, let's see here. Well, I mean, it has its own stand, right? The, the goal is to put the to connect up the arms, you know, yeah. at some point. So, um, from what I can see, is that the 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 face amount is the bigger one than the hundred millimeters. So, it might be um, out of luck. But if it does, then then so be it. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll I'll find out. I'll find it might out be it might be fourteen. That's also a standard size, I think. Yeah, it's funny they don't. So also, I think what normally what they do is when you're buying on Amazon, they say buy these together, and the buy these together is the um, is the Amazon monitor mount. Hmm. And I think that's what I did. I bought all all three together. Um, Riveting content. So so I think I'm I'm probably safe because it says that's the one I purchased. So I think I'm good. Yeah. I think I should be good. We should um, we shall so, hear about this later. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. So my my plan for one of that side monitor is to um to just put it on a stand and then I will likely buy um at least one more of those Amazon ones and now my brain is rigged up that uh, go over to the computer store and buy one more of those monitors cuz um you know just from uh, aesthetics and sort of more current and modern and i knew i had this growing feeling i was gonna need like an extra good monitor and so uh, i do have that one that i use today or haven't been in the last <laughs> 18 hours um so yeah anyhow so i'm redoing my workspace and i i i have to kind of consider what work from home looks like and sort of also how I've been using this space. And so I need a, a place to sort of stow creative gear that's in a place that's accessible but isolated. And uh, I want the, the main desktop space to be as minimal as possible and as few, like, except for monitors and the mounts and for, like, the ATM from Blackmagic sitting up on the desk. Uh, I also bought um a new mic mount to hook up the um you know my f4 as an audio interface for upstairs so, yeah for upstairs so that mm. i can do recording up there um so not saying i don't like coming down here it's just that uh without utilizing the physical space with other people it's kind of seems less less important um yeah mm. You could you could make downstairs a little bit more appealing, like maybe uh, fix, yeah, fixing the AC and stuff, <laughs> uh, making it well, less damp and uh, you know. Well, that's more about the humidifier. So I have a humidifier down here. It's just that it has a small, um, you know, a, a small. Uh, I would call it a bucket. It's not really it, it integrates in the humidifier, but yeah, it's like a bucket they got to pull out. Um, and it it does it it dries up the room when so I use it. It's a dehumidifier. It's a dehumidifier. Yes, yes, I know. We say humidifier, and you always <laughs> like, have a grit on your face. It's a dehumidifier. It's not you, making you, the you room. You got you got to make sure that you have the right thing because otherwise you're making it worse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it it does it pulls a massive amount of moisture out of the room when it runs. Um, and so the only kind of thing I really need to do in this space is sort of take the existing stuff that's off sort of in in my background and um, get rid of gear and cables or mm. go through those cables and just junk them. I don't use them anymore. I put a pile of stuff over there and, you know, and it's not stuff I use for like the mixer. So like, you know, there's all old cables. So Are you going to sell on eBay? Slightly no. used. No, I don't, I don't bother doing any of that. I'm likely to, um, 
should have organized them all, put them in a pile, uh, and then one day call one of those places where you pay them some money to take your junk. And then I'll get rid of the, the old servers and a whole bunch of things that like are just sitting around just as paperweights. Yeah. Just sitting in a corner. I mean, you know. Yeah. I just got to gotta get to it. That's all. So my first start was the place where I, I'm living the most. <laughs> yeah. Just getting, getting, making separation between where you work and where you live, where you right. enjoy stuff is is important i've noticed the last couple of weeks i've been getting to it it's been getting to a point where i just didn't want to do anything after work i just wanted to go and do something outside or you know right away from that room but now I... I've, I've got everything separated and now i do have like hey i want to do art and stuff right i have a little i had a, i went through that a little bit um, maybe a, a month ago where I was like, I just, just want to drive somewhere. I want to have somewhere to go. Yeah, well, I think that's that's also a, you know, we were all stuck inside for a while. Right, I, I, but so where most people were freaking out, like first two seconds of, of all the the lockdown, I didn't have that problem, right? You know, as nerds, we are mostly inside anyways. Um, at our computers doing things, even if it's not computer related specific, but it could be art or streaming or gaming. We are mm-hmm. at some kind of screen uh, in the house most of the time anyways. Um, so, you know, working for moments, just separating the, the work from everything else. Um, in my case, uh, I, my chair, I bought a new chair, uh, it wasn't that expensive. It's comfortable, but I've noticed because I'm sitting in it for like you know, twelve plus hours every day, maybe maybe near sixteen hours. I notice that there are times where the pressure is lost in the coil, and it starts to feel like I'm sinking. And then I go and I I stand up and I pop the lever up to rise it to the top, and sometimes oh. it's. Then you're, then you're, uh, then you're the, the, that, uh, the pressure, uh, thing is broken. Um, it, it will, it will start doing it more and more and eventually it will just completely fail. Right. So, so you should probably get that fixed. <laughs> so either, oh, oh, which brings me up to one small tangent. I've been sitting in this, this ratty chair with pillows on it yes. for so long. So my original plan was buy this inexpensive chair and this brand and see if I like it. I do like it. And uh, if I really like it, maybe I'll buy a second one later. Maybe I'll buy a slightly better one and then take this one from upstairs to downstairs and solve that one problem with that ratty chair. And I might still do that. But if if your uh, gas spring is, is broken, then you should probably replace the gas spring or, you know, replace the chair in some cases it's right. impossible to and i could see if i can buy just that particular replacement part because it literally is just a thing you just pop out sits on you know it was like yeah but were get, taking, it together. taking it out is usually a bit bit of a hassle there's like a trick to getting them out because they're like jammed in there but friction so it's very hard for you to remove that that gas spring from there yeah it, i'm trying to it's, remember it's a problem i'm trying to remember how that was but even then it doesn't doesn't do it all day it's just there's some of that sort of phantom feeling you think it is. And then, again, I raise it up and it's like, oh, no, it's it's just me. Mm. And then there are times where, no, I'm totally sinking. <laughs> mm. hey. The only difference is now I could, I could uh, adjust the height on my table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can just stand. You're going to get one of those uh, like uh, standing desk chairs, like one of those things I, where you can lean against it. I don't know yet. They, they're um, very good. I, you know, the reason that I, I wanted to do that is I wanted an actual good piece of furniture because what I was doing is these sort of um, these things that are meant for like corporate banquet tables where they fold up and then they go into a closet. Right. And I did the same thing to get sort of area space down here in the basement studio. I did the same thing. And these things are sturdy and they hold the little weight that I put on top of it. Um, and so 
I bought a, I couldn't find them uh, when I got the last one. So I ended up um, buying something with sort of a sturdier plastic one. And that's what I was using upstairs. So I wanted something that I could actually mount things to. Like I can mount the, uh, I found ways to mount like the mic arms to these tables. But they have like this um, like metal L bracket that is sort of the sort of the, the framing, the structure. And so I can clamp against that. Um, it's not, you know, it's not incredibly reliable. And certainly I, you wouldn't want to put a 50 pound monitor <laughs> arm plus something on something like that. So I bought a real desk and that was and so I was like, well, while I'm at it, uh, I might as well buy one of these standing desks so that I'm not sitting all day. But also, you're actually going to use it. If I want to film, if I want to film, there's a benefit of filming while you're standing up. And and if I'm going to be rigging um, stuff ready to do that kind of thing, plus for streaming, I might as well just raise the desk, which will raise all the gear, all the recording, all the everything with me. Along. Are you going to record? Are you going to hook the 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 camera up to the desk? Because if, uh, yeah. if you if you don't, then you can just move your desk into view. <laughs> no, I, no, I uh, at the end of the stream, you just move down. No, one of the problems, even when I try to use tripods and stuff like that, even let's say I makeshift something on top of the couch, um, I really needed something that was in close proximity to me, and so uh, and my webcam that I bought. Uh, is really crap with color. Not the one you're seeing me on. This one's sort of the old school. And so I bought the Brio 4K. And it's really bad with color. And uh, it's not saying that, that that lighting environment near me is great. But it's just really bad with color. So. Um, and I don't want to stream with it. <laughs> so let's start with that. Let's just use DSLR for that. Who cares? Right, and I have it. Oh, mirrorless or whatever. Yeah, mirrorless, right. Whatever, I know what you meant. And so I have all that, right? And so with the ATM Mini, um, it makes everything uh, a lot easier, and it takes the heavy lifting that would normally, like, kill your your gear. Um, it takes care of all that for me. And then I can simplify, you know, a workflow to OBS by just taking all the data from over USB as a webcam. So, um, but I will need to physically hook up gear. So I'm going to physically mount mics, lights, camera, monitors <laughs> to a real desk that I built last night. Are you done with your desk? No, I haven't even really set all the crap up on it yet. I, I, I know, but are you done back. with your story about your desk? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a tangent for about an hour. Holy crap, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I give you I give you the consolidation. You could just jump right fucking to that. <laughs> I always give you the summary, which is like, you know, the tight five minutes. Mm-hmm. Sure. Then plus a little tangent you can cut off. Yep. So anyhow, yep. enough about that. <laughs> Look, you know what? I don't talk to many people about this stuff. It all gets bottled up in my brain until you and I talk. <laughs> <sighs> so, I mean, look, you uh, you redid your area. Yeah, so, I did. Yeah, and now it's, you're, you know, you're talking from, but you did it with all the existing stuff that you had. Well, right? some, yes. I did, did buy a new monitor. But. A new monitor, okay. But, I mean... You didn't need to, for me, it's a whole change of the environment and area. Yeah, I, I redid the entire room, basically. I yeah, pulled three uh, desks out and put one desk in. Yeah, but I, my, my comparison is the shift for me is just, there's more going on in, in the effort of trying to do it. Where you, is like, I, I think I just need an extra monitor. And then I just need to reorganize it with my existing gear. <laughs> well, I, I pulled everything apart. So I, I, I just thought that my, right. because of my reasoning that the work was encroaching on my creative, creative stuff, it yeah. was, you know, breaking me. 
And yeah, and I and and because I did, I hadn't played a game in 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 a, like a couple of months. Like I didn't use the game PC for mm-hmm. basically two months, three months. And that was ever since we started working from home. And I was like, yeah, I need I need to get like I need to get some space for that. I need to make the creative station my creative station again and play some games. I have to play Satisfactory. We haven't even talked about that one yet. <laughs> no. Oh, it's, uh... Yeah. I just uh, I just needed to re- redo my space. And so uh, I am... It's not extreme, but I'm, I'm doing it with a little of column A, a little of column B, and a bunch of new stuff. And uh, I am... I'm at that point where I'm ready for that technology upgrade. Um, so I got to do some steps forward before I can, um, start, start making some, what do you, you mean know, technology upgrade? Uh, so monitor, right. Want to consolidate how I was doing that. Like I tacked on a monitor, talked down another monitor. Okay. Well, I'm at this point where I just, um, let's just solve the monitor problem. Okay. So I bought a big new monitor. Um, then I want to solve. Mm camera and podcasting streaming all that stuff is sort of all that gear will sort of roll together so i have some pre-existing stuff so i don't need right now to start to go buy a dedicated interface so i can use my f4 as my interface for that um it will work even if it's over slow usb 2.0 it'll it'll do exactly what i need without any any delay i've already tested in the past down here in the studio um, it'll also work as my good hardware recorder if I need to just turn on a thing and record. Mm. Um, so got some of that, um, needed to solve the desk problem so I can mount stuff to it. Um, so I thought of all of that. Um, and I want to be able to have a credit space that I can also flip shift into a workspace as I need it. Mm. And I want to be able to, uh, all integrated with the streaming be able to do the gaming bits right i, I wonder play. i wonder how long it's going to take for you to figure out if 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 that, if that work is going to encroach on your on whatever you do outside of work if already I, I, already I been if, through that with the last job uh i already know what that is and so part of having the side table is to isolate things i don't want on the desk and also things that are to be able to swivel and shift and have a creative sort of workspace. Now, what's the likelihood is one corner of it, I'm going to put a printer on, and the other corner of it, I'm going to put a bunch of computer gear and a bunch of hard drives, which also does serve as those hard drives are for like the filming stuff so I can swap things in and out of it. Um, so it it all does kind of already, will already serve for that. And all of the C-stands and all that filming will be in that sort of quadrant corner of the the living room and so will be separated mm. uh, and if i need access to that stuff i'll have it and um and those two environments will be for now will be a matter of of flipping a couple things and utilizing some of the existing gear that's up on the actual new desk mm. like the monitor um the big monitor and all that big stuff will not be it literally the difference is I'll be swiveling over here to the left versus swiveling over completely onto the, my right. That's the difference. Yeah. And so, or swiveling to the left versus the right, whatever. So, and uh, I I need a space that does the all the things for me because I don't really unless I set up a specific office environment for work exclusively down here which I did in the past, and I didn't love it. So uh, that's why I moved upstairs. Um, I wanted to separate my normal office space away from my creative actual space. So I already kind of had gone through this battle over the years. I've already been there, done that, and this is my, my step towards a different direction and see what the iterations look like eventually. Mm. There will be. There definitely will be some iterations, but I'm I'm thinking about what I think I need now, what I want now, mm. you know, uh, and I have more flexibility now. Okay. Yeah. Change at six. <laughs> yep. 
That's going to be interesting. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll fucking edit this thing for you, man. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've been working on uh, the art book. I got like, I think I have like seven commissions now in it and like from other people. And I have uh, like seven pictures left to do and including some artwork for Christmas and for Halloween, which Halloween is usually my busiest time of the year because it's when yeah. I do most of the artwork. So, um, yeah, I've got, uh, I got a week off in about a week, I've gotten one more work week and then I have a week off mm. from work and I can start doing some artwork. For... Yeah, I guess, you, you know, you make a good point here, which I think is why you made the comment about like separating your workspace from your creative space. My, the two things that are creative for me are all digital, right? And, and obviously what you do with your art is digital and you have like a lot of dedicated sort of maker room right, for 3D printing and when you do, like, little electronic pro projects and whatnot. So I don't, I don't have a need for that kind of space yet. Um, I might never, right? That's more of your thing than it is You mean the separation thing. or the... Uh... Not just the separation, but, like, a physical different workspace for those kinds of things. Well, I, I, all I did is I separated the fun stuff from the work stuff. And that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to do because the the work was just, just at, at the end of the day. Oh, oh, I'll go, I'll go check if something, uh, some, some right. person emailed me back or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I, I shouldn't be doing that in the weekend. Oh, I shouldn't be doing that in it. the evening. Ah, uh, so I've already, I've already put that mental firewall up. So, oh, no, no, I understand. But like yeah. normally my laptop would be in my backpack and I would just take it out at the office. Right. And, would, right, and right, only right. in emergencies I would take it out the bag but and now I, it is uh you know yeah, it's easy you're to, all in the same place all the same chair all yeah. day but um, now I, now i have a a desk in the in the living room that i use for because i wasn't really using my living room anyway it's like it's, it's got hamsters but that's about it and a tv that i never use yeah <laughs> it's uh, like it, it's so stupid it's like it's like a my my office is like a what was it again? It was I think it was like a um, man cave. It's a four meter by one point eight meter room, so it's a six by uh, six by twenty, I guess. Mm. Room. It's a very tiny room. Yeah. So I, uh, that's that's my office. That's where I put my artwork. That's what the, the photo you saw. That's where that is. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a very big room, but it's a very nice separated room that I can just you know go into and do my thing. If I yeah. do that in the office, uh, in, in this office, I have the 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 sound dampening stuff on the walls. I've got all that sort of crap happening, but in the living room, I do not. So. I have an echo. There's hamsters right. that make noises. There's other stuff that makes noises like a fridge and right. stuff. So, you know, it's. And I, I, I do I like... recognize when I, uh, when I start rigging up microphones and whatnot, I'm going to have to deal with that problem. I'm hoping to maybe drop some sound, the sort of moving blanket stuff as the backdrop, as my backdrop instead of the green screen. And that will do some absorption where the reflection would kick the most for me. And I'll have to go through that. I'm not going to be in the living room putting up, you know, $4,000 of sound panel grids. I'm not, not doing that. Well, these weren't $4,000. They were very cheap. <laughs> right. Exactly. I will, I will still, for all the money that I'm spending on getting new desk and some streaming stuff and mounts and da, da, da. I, I'm not, I'm not going crazy. I'm not spending $6,500 to take the basement and turn it into a soundproof or a room. Like I, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that to my office space. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm renting. I'm, it's not, I don't own the house. You know what mm. I mean? So my, my, uh, my, Good hesitation, healthy hesitation to not destroy the house is a good positive thing but for you me. Can, not you can to go build, crazy. you can build a room within the house, right? So you can just make your own sure. Well, recording studio, like the, within, with like uh, uh, like fake walls, basically. Right, I got that. So in the basement, 
um, the where I stuck everything is I stuck all the mics sort of it's not like dead center in the open space in the basement, but it's it's you know almost near center. So when everyone is sitting here, reflection is very little of an issue for me by the natural configuration where I put stuff. Um, I could have put it up near against the wall in the other corner and you know da, and put a bunch of I didn't have to do any of that. And also by the fact that these are drop ceilings, they don't reflect very well. So they do more absorption than they do um, causing reflection. me reflection problems. Mm -hmm. And I'm far enough away from both sides of this wall that sort of, um, you know, separates sort of the part of the basement where all the like the heating and stuff is that that becomes less of an issue. This mic never gets the reflection, does, just doesn't get close enough to this particular mic that I talk on um, to cause me issues here. So I sort of thought about it that way, and that's why the basement's a really good place for recording. And mm. and well, holding, except having, when the, when the you heating know, goes on. Uh, yeah, but I can control and turn that off. Yeah. That's not a big deal. So you also had like a, I think you bought like some more U lights, I guess. Uh, yeah. So what I did upstairs is I bought four. So I have six floodlights upstairs. And what I did is I bought uh, two white ones above me because I was spending a lot of money on buying color ones. And I bought four color ones in that room because this is the room we were playing Artemis in with the idea that I was maybe going to rig um, Artemis's, uh, I was going to create like an Artemis client to act as like a participant in the game to read. So when we did red alert that I would sh shift the hue lights to red for red alert yeah. and sort of color coordinated and whatever. Um, and so I started working on stuff like that. So I, I encouraged myself to buy some color lights in their room, but I didn't buy six, I bought four because they're at the time they were 50 bucks a pop per color. Yeah, light. the now color, color lights are expensive. The, the, right. I have all you white lights in my house because I don't want the uh, the the disco feeling of, you know, my right. my entire house different RGB colors. Right. So the uh the point of it is that I bought those, you know, I spent 200 bucks at that time and I bought four and then I spent 50 bucks uh and I bought two white lights above me where the desk area was. So what I finally, since I was making all these changes, what I finally decided to do was I bought four hue lights, the the floods, because there's six down here. Mm. Um, and then I bought two new color ones, so I did a swap a row. So I finally took the the white floods that are down here, um, and so they're now not physical. They're not the old bulbs now. They're all hue. It's all hue in the basement here. Minus the one that's probably behind the wall. I don't think I put a hue bulb, uh, an LED bulb in the basement area where the heater is. Um, and then these two special lights that are above me uh, when they finish the room, they took these two halogen lights. Um, and there isn't a, uh, there isn't, I don't think hue makes an equivalent of that. So it's all, all are hue. They, uh, the GU tents? I don't know. I don't know what they are. And they're on, so yeah. even if I took a picture of them, it would, you know, wouldn't help. Um, yeah, I, I have. Um, uh, I bought some of the smart plugs, right, and some of the uh, dimmer switches. So I put. I, I have most of my lights in my house are U now. So I do have yeah. some lights outside on the balcony, and the balcony has like those old style, you know, normal lights, mm -hmm. but they're attached to a plug that's in my office. So what I did is I bought one of those uh, smart plugs. You can just right. put in between the, the a normal plug and just the wall socket. And it just has like a relay in it and it just turns it on. I did mm -hmm. the same thing with the lights and at my bar at my um, my kitchen. So I have a little kitchen uh, attached to the living room. It's like on the other side of the wall for this office room. Tiny, tiny little space. About the same size as this office. That's my kitchen. And right. then there's a bar attached to that, but the bar is like, um, it's just the, the the standard spotlights with, like, attached to plugs. There was like a, a, a um, uh, what do you call those? Um, 
um, a power strip. There's just a power strip there. Oh, so okay. what I so what I did is just took the power oh, strip just, and plugged uh, it, plugged another power strip into yeah, it yeah. with just a with just a smart plug. So, yeah, Done. They do... And now it turns on and off when I say it should turn on and off. Yeah. Um they they do that sometimes in kitchens, right? The uh the fan above the stove. Well, there is a small little cabinet above it and if you open it up there, there's a wall plug right rated for that stuff right they stick mm. stuff like we, we, that we can't there. have fans in this uh, apartment complex because if we turn those fans on we will blow all the all the cooking smells into other people's houses so that's yeah not a so good idea. um the point is that you know they they do that sometimes in the kitchens where that's sort of yeah, their yeah, cheat yeah. where they wire the power there right yeah. for the microwaves that There's are up a... in your cabin tree and stuff like that there, um, there's a power socket underneath my sink, which I'm very, very wary of, because there's also a uh, like a water heater, like a tiny water heater. Oh, interesting. It's, well, those are usually meant for like the garbage disposals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just I think that's that's the case. But um, yeah, the thing here is that it's like I don't trust that it's hooked up to something, and I'm gonna have to get an electrician in to sort that shit out at some point because it's uh do you have well, a g you have a gfr there though right um that's the question you should if it's in the kitchen it should have a gfr at least i know in the u.s definitely in the state of pennsylvania there's definitely a regulation yeah. that all kitchens all the plugs have to be oh yeah yeah connected definitely because the um, the the water heater that's in there it's broken because the uh it just went straight to ground at some point and oh, and while I was watching The Expanse, it just turned everything off. The entire house went, went dark. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> bad. That's so, not yeah, and, and then I had to, where is this coming from? And I heard a little little tink coming from the uh, from the kitchen area. I was like, huh, I wonder if that was the, uh, yep, it was, the, it was the water heater. Right, so it kicked the breaker. Yeah, uh, so I, I just unplugged it. And uh, it's still there. I don't use it, but it's still there. Interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, to answer your question, most of the house is most mostly hue. I have some stuff mm. in my bathroom that I think I'm probably going to eventually one day. One day could be three years from now. Uh, I'll, I'll replace them with just hue bulbs. They're like, they're like big, those clear um, big ball. They, they look like snow globes. Um, Makeup mirror mm. lights and you don't. You know noticed... you don't have to buy uh like you specific lights, right? It's all zig. I know. So if you can just get one of those cheaper ones, it will just work. Sure, I understand. All you um, need is the bridge. I know. We'll talk really to each need other. all. That's right. And so I thought about it. and I think I have thirty, including all the the switcheroo now. But let me let me say the one thing that are nice about at least the floods. I don't know about you know in your lamp. Um, the accent color above me, being able to control that tone actually does sometimes make a huge difference for me because that mood where you feel sort of disillusioned by work or this or that or, or you know, it's screwing up your, your behavior of checking your phone nine times a minute um, for work emails. Outside of those, those kind of problems, um, being able to adjust the tone makes a huge difference. Going from a work tone where you're focused to a chill at home tone has like helped sort of my sort of thinking hmm. about it. But but here's the other driver to kind of close that loop is the idea is I am likely going to be the whole point of setting this creative space up is that I might start filming in there again. and. Uh, having the two sort of floodlights that are directly above that space there control or help me control my color tone above me is almost like additional lighting for that to that filming site. Yeah, if you, if you consider making like a like a little mini, hey, this I upgraded my uh, my workspace uh, pre and then post. Uh, no, this is what it looks like. You should. You no, should. I know you want to see it, but no one else does. Uh, trust me more people will like it just do more, it 
more importantly, I just have to work it out. And so last night was building the desk and I built that. And then I was like near midnight. And then it was after midnight and that I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do all this stuff tomorrow, <laughs> which so, is today. So I, I, all right, I hooked we, up my, uh, my switch to one of the monitors on my art desk thingy, my, my creative space. Mm -hmm. So I can actually stream like switch games now. Right. And that, that was also part of my, my plan. Mm. Um, was to have one of these monitors dedicated for that. I'm thinking um, I'm thinking of taking the TV from the living room, taking moving this desk all the way back to the other side, drilling some holes in the wall and p mounting it on the wall here so I can play video games on the 4K screen like mm. in my, you know. My yeah, I uh, like I said I I bought one of those side monitors and and, and per our conversation or per my tangent um during this recording i'm thinking i might go back over to micro center and just buy another one it does, it, does it have speakers or something um it does actually so that's the one thing the one dell monitor that was a touch screen is kind of heavy um it's fine when it's just why, sitting on why the don't desk you, why don't you buy a tv like a small well, tv well hold on no no, no. I, I there's a reason for for me thinking this way um i don't want to do a tv so there's that. The second thing is, um, this is this this new monitor just happens to be basically bezel-less. Um, mm. So that's real nice. Aesthetically, it's real nice. One of the things it does better because it's newer is it will flip the signaling where my other one, the touchscreen one's a little too heavy. And I have some concern about putting up, mounting it in, you know, somewhere else. And... Uh, what do you mean and the flip other, the signaling? And and yeah, if I want to turn the switch on, right? Oh, uh, oh, because you want to switch over to the uh, Nintendo Switch. Yeah, just and it will just it does it automatically. In fact, it was doing it automatically when I was switching between computers. I mm -hmm. didn't even that side monitor. I was just like using for the other computer, so I just plugged the thing. How many in inputs does it have? Uh, so the the inexpensive monitor is it was like an ultra sharp, uh, twenty three. It's basically twenty four inch, um. And it's full full HD. It's not 4K. It's just 2K. Um, and it has either it definitely has Display Port either one two. It has to have at least one two. It, possibly I think one four on the back of it, but obviously it wouldn't make any sense. One two on the back, and then there's two HDMI. Okay, so there's like mm, okay. So, I mean, that's ample for me to put, do it as streaming program and then as one of the side monitors for the existing setup for the computer. Mm. Um, and then one of the other ones. So, it's also really super light. So, that one is more mountable in my brain to mm. one of the vertical poles that I'm going to put up for I just, I just streaming realized, and programming. I just realized that all the th all the monitors I have right now like there's one Philips and the rest is all LG. Yeah. It's like I, I, I've been so for some reason I've been buying nothing but LG monitors. Yeah, I, I have a hodgepodge, right? The one that you're on right now is an AOC and that was perfectly fine. I just needed I have, like, uh, I have two AOCs at work. So like um, I got we got some from a company that uh no longer exists. So uh get them uh get them second hand, but they're they're pretty good. They're four K monitors. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I was going for before was just um, 2K. Mm. And so I don't need, you know, I have the one big 4K. And we'll see if the eGPU, I'm sure it'll be fine. It will drive at least a secondary 2K. And um, and then I need a, a, a second monitor that I'm going to use for dedicated um you know for the atm for streaming mm. um and in the meantime it'll be dedicated for the nintendo switch so the, and, so, the so the atm that 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 has like inputs for hdmi and stuff it does yep yeah. and yeah. it will do the 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 scan converting between them um mm. and then it will output and it, the it how, has how many four, inputs does it have four in um it has two out 
two out being one is for your preview, meaning not meant for your stream, and then one then the actual final of the program. Um, it has USB on it. The Pro Edition has um, you can hook up a LAN to it, so you can do Ethernet and you could directly send stuff to Twitch. That isn't my intention. I'll probably um, push it through the laptop through OBS and add some extra stuff to it, mm. um, like including my microphone. Um, mm. It has two mic audio in, so I will likely also route some uh, audio from the analog mic in to it. Um, if, if you're going to do games and stuff, are you going to do like games on uh, like your, your laptop or something? Are you going to play Satisfactory? Yeah, so I don't know. I'm either going to do Satisfactory or uh, uh, we'll likely do Animal Crossing. Um, but mostly I think in my, my brain isn't for me to sit there and become a, a gaming streamer. I think it will be more of, um, you know, doing stuff for like podcast things. Definitely down here when we do that, that would be for setting this situation up for doing sort of unlisted um, YouTube live stuff for patrons. Mm. Um, and then upstairs, I was thinking about maybe, maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe sort of a dedicated unlisted stream for patrons while I'm editing. I saw uh, Hank Green did a, uh, uh I saw that. A, a, I didn't watch stream it when he was doing the, uh, editing vlog. Bar- yeah, yeah. 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 It's like cutting cutting parts out of his his like video, making it shorter, making it shorter, under four minutes. Yeah, well, I I do know, um, I know that some people who are interested in in editing will will be interested for at least a moment of me, some dude who's editing his podcast, right, and watching watching what I do and how I'm fixing stuff. Um, but I wouldn't want to say I wouldn't want to put that on Twitch. And then we're at Twitch, you can't say, OK, but this is just for my patrons. And so that's where sort of the unlisted YouTube comes in. Mm. But then even then, people could share that outside of the. OK, you know, so there, there's an option for you for to do this. Yeah. Uh, if you do a uh, if you start sign up for Picardo, Picardo has private stream. So you can set it to actually private. And all you have to do is like allow these people in. Um, into the stream so um is they, that do they have to be have picardo accounts because i know yeah you're and you can have that. a password too okay got it all right so maybe i do something like that um make that for a patron picardo only. might actually like fit better than twitch right. or, or youtube yeah well the 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 point is that the atm what it can do is it will because of the USB C on it is it will act as a webcam if you connect it up as um you know, to your, to a laptop, you can also do software control with it if you need, uh, or you want, which means you can do its color tweaking in the ATM mm. for all the inputs, uh, mm. not just what it's sending out. So yeah, you but if if, do... if you're doing stuff over over OBS, you're still putting a load on your your machine. Sure, but it would be coming from a webcam signal, and all the heavy stuff and the scan converting and all that would be. Uh, be done by the ATM. And also I'd have physical buttons I could click and I you know I guess eventually I'm going to end up buying a stream deck go from these minis to something larger. Um and you know it's all going to happen. Mm-hmm. It will happen. Um the, the, but those the are the topic of this uh this podcast is going to be Alan buys stuff. That's yeah. going to be the topic. I saw Alan is redoing his workspace. <laughs> Everybody's That's... doing their redoing their workspace. I, I, I think I've seen like, like six or seven people in my YouTube follow list that were doing, oh, I redid my entire environment and uh, we're moving a new studio and all sorts of other stuff. Like we're doing new desks. and Yeah, but I yeah. only... I make these large purchases when I can every more than five years, usually like my brain wants to say like every seven years or so, uh, I make some small iterations. Like I was in a position where I was, okay, I needed a new mixing board. So I did that um, because my sort of not spending money approach of running everything through an audio interface for like a couple of years was painful <laughs> for me. Um, and then when I could, 
I spent the money, I saved the money, and I bought this nice, you know, mixing board, and okay. and I iterated. So Did, I don't know. Were you but, able to catch the um, the comment? Uh, no, I didn't even bother. And you sent me a ton of pictures, so I left it at that. <laughs> it's like my my parents were like, "Yeah, we don't need to go see that." Ugh. I mean, you're not going to see one for the next couple of years, All right? This could be your chance to see one. Mm. Yeah, I um I also wasn't in a position at that time because when it was going to be coming my way, it was going to be too early in the morning. Well, no, it's it's the same time for you and for me. So it's just rotates the the Earth is rotating. That's when it's coming into view. So right, but for me, what was happening is it was like when I would be asleep or it would be way too late. But for you, it was in the zone of normal-ish time. <laughs> it's also for you. Same, same time. You're, it, it's because the earth rotates, right? So that's why you get to see it at the same time at your place. So when, Well, whenever, when, whatever that day you were talking to me about it, I said I looked up when would it be passing through my area and it was too late. Yeah, so between 11 or and... Too early four i guess so when yeah. when it was actually dark yeah so that that would not be i'd be sleeping <laughs> i know oh. you're not a dedicated geek that's what that noise was <laughs> it was a very good opportunity to use your camera but uh yeah i just i got wasn't. i got so uh at some point i went out and with my brother and we went to the into like the like the farmer's fields and we took took mm -hmm. some pictures of the of the comet yeah it was actually pretty good uh we got some good pictures but uh, on the way back i neglected to um uh, pat down my bag and there were uh like a bazillion mosquitoes in it oh so when i get gross. back home in the <laughs> in bed i was like what Bzzz, all the time i was like oh man i i must have killed like 20 mosquitoes that night and then the next couple of days, I still had mosquitoes, so it was it was not great. For uh, a once in a lifetime picture. Yeah, well, probably worth it. Well, it was up till like two or three in the morning, like yeah. like having a look at the pictures. I still have the raw files. I haven't actually opened them up to to go and look at them, make them better or whatever. Right. But uh, you know. Yeah, you got yeah. a couple, couple good shots. Got some good shots. All right, so. Uh, well, I ranted at least the the first uh, hour and 15 minutes, 75 minutes of, of this, that John will, will edit down. Uh, he's gritting like, ah, he's probably not going to edit anything down. Leave it as is. Um, you want to do some links? We got to talk about something else. Well, yeah. Well, I was going to talk about the art book, but you keep cutting me off about that. So it's oh, fine. yeah. Sorry. It's fine. I was, you were talking, you were, you were transitioning, segueing into your art space. But yeah, okay. So you're working on that. Mm -hmm. And? Yeah, well, uh, basically, I'm almost nearly done. I just need to finish the final pictures. I've got the sketches done for that. So mm -hmm. all I need to do is. Uh, do the line work and all the other work that I need to do for it. I might have another gonna... commission lined up for somebody else uh, to get some some other artists involved, and then uh, then it should be done. But I saw some uh, that we will get to in a minute um, about another artist that did an art book, um, and that might lead into the the, the fun stuff or actually links. Um, as there is a guy called uh, Ross uh, Ross, what's his name? His channel is called Ross Draws. He mm -hmm. came out with an art book called Nima, and it was actually it was a Kickstarter several years ago. And he talks about like the, the like the guilt like that comes with like the Kickstarter and working on that art book and then scrapping it and redoing it again. I was like, yes, yes, I've done that a couple of times already. Mm -hmm. Like the all pressure. those all those problems with like the, the 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 art book, but like I didn't do a Kickstarter, so I I don't have that guilt except for myself that I worked on this right. thing for so long that I'm like, I need to get this done at some point. Right. That's been more my issue with most projects is I need a, I need to work on that thing. Get it finished, get it done. Anyway. Right. So he has yeah. a, uh, um, an art book 
out called Nima, and he also has another one. I think he put like an in betweener out. But this is about like the 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 process he went through. So Paul Mankel UG UG for that. Uh, and then I have two other links, also art related. So Carl Kopins Kopinski is like a artist that did a lot of the um, Magic Gathering cards. So lots oh, okay. of like, uh, and he also did like uh, Warhammer, I think. So Paul Mankel UI, and that's on uh, the Proco channel. And King Jung Gi. And also interview, also an interview, uh, Paul Mack link slash UJ. That's for like, they're, they're pretty cool interviews with like artists. And it's, it's also very good to, to have a look at. It's, it's, it's like the, the, the way they work, like it shows you some of the, like the, the, the steps they take to make it faster. And it's like really cool stuff. So go, go check those out. Oh, <laughs> I have another link. <laughs> Uh, so Spaceship U, uh, that's, I think I linked that last time, but it's like been two months, I guess. Uh, did you watch this by the way? I did not. Oh. Um, unless I had watched it in the past. <laughs> the CGP recall. Grey had a video just about the start of the whole, the whole lockdown crap happening about like organizing your spaces. And over the last few <laughs> few weeks, it's been resonating with me more and more. Like, yes, I need to make the separation. I need to make make sure my yeah, bedroom yeah. is clean and like not messy with game controllers and and like uh, yeah, like yep. things of clothing and <laughs> all sorts of crap. So like, I like I like the way he represented it. And the more I the more I think about it, the more it resonates with me. Like. I need to go and do more of that stuff to to clear out mm -hmm. all the junk. Like I have my my balcony with with vegetables and 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 stuff that I take care of that I need to go feed some water in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Um and like I need to to keep everything clean and neat and I think that that's very important for me because otherwise I'm going to go nuts at some point. Crawl up the walls. Because I, I I'm I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Because yeah, me too. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just uh, oh I'm done with this toss in the corner. <laughs> right. I, Whoops. Uh, my friend Chrissy visited me one time, and she we came to uh, a term bachelor piles. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and 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 so. I, but but I do I do actually have some physical separation right the the studio and the recording creative space is down here, uh, and then I further took my sort of daily in the office out of computers bit and I moved that upstairs um, to separate those two things. Uh, and so now when I when I edit, I literally just take the SD card, I walk it upstairs, I copy it, I walk the SD card back down, I put it back into the board. And that's it. Those are my separations. So, so you don't uh, edit downstairs in the basement anymore? Nope, I do not. And so it's it's a physical space. And it used to be originally when I moved in, I was like, all right, I'll set up the projector. I set up the surround. The speakers are still down here. They've been turned off for years. Um, and then what I started to do is when I um, wasn't using that cart over there and doing this over there, I started to pile like the bachelor piles or the I'll deal with it later. I don't need this cable. I can't check if this yeah. is good anymore. Put it over there pile. Yeah, uh, that, old, that old box wireless of cables, router we all know, pile. All know one of those. Yeah, and so uh and then I put bookshelves in and I put a bunch of like various little I don't know things we were getting I was getting from loot crate, um uh, a little plushy thingies like a, you know, put them on your art book is on one shelf over there. Uh, the last one <laughs> is my art book there that's not good <laughs> uh, well it's 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 fine on it, it's should not be, like should be hidden somewhere uh well i mean it's not it's behind it's not that it's hidden it's that it's on the shelf with other stuff so yeah, yeah. and then i was putting like financial documents and things that i'm going to eventually shred that you know i moved in here over 10 years ago so that's still a thing um it just builds up as a pile but so, you know, I, I put all that stuff down here and that was my sort of, this was my physical creative space. Originally it was going to be my 
my also my TV space, my theater space. Yeah. And then I never used oh, you, that. You did. You did have that uh, that, that uh, projector there downstairs. I guess. For a while, and yeah. then I moved it upstairs for Artemis, uh, and then we used it sort of. I I had I had another screen that was meant for portable use that I I literally just kind of strung up in the the living room. It sort of sits like right to the right of the TV. It just sits there. It actually acts as more of a a blackout curtain for the light coming in in that window for for anything. Uh for the most I sent part. you a picture of my uh the other side of that room that I just that I just took the picture right, of. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a way more organized than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's because I just took apart this entire room. So there's right. no clutter on the ground. Well, there's a box there with hard drives in it, but that's something that I need to actually take care of. But it's there because I need to take yeah. care of it. It's like, yeah, so I'm, it, I'm just taking everything apart. I'm not putting any more yeah. junk. The only junk that I have right now on my desk, and that's that's saying something, uh, I have that, like the Cintiq 24. Mm. Um, I don't have the stand yet. Because I still need to buy it, because but because it's six hundred bucks, I'm like, eh, I can, I can go a little bit longer without like actually right. buying that thing, right? Taking so some time. So what I did is I bought. I I still had like uh, a f- couple of uh, manga. Uh, I have the uh, Bleach collection, so I fixed it with a bit a little bit of Bleach. <laughs> so I have like two, uh, two two volumes of the bleach manga on underneath my uh, my tablet it's 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 dumb and people are gonna hate me for it but like you know it, it works yeah just, i but, but i think the larger point was yeah i i've been i've been bad with i have a pile of mess over here on this corner of the basement i have stuff over there that um i don't use it's gear it's all gear i don't i mean using that setup i mean i was putting the lights in i saw how dusty and gross the top of the screen that's just been basically you know expanded and sitting this way for years i don't use the space anymore um and then you know then my bedroom is my bedroom is for sleeping and you know i have a bathroom attached so like it's it's for that stuff I don't, I took the TV out a long time ago. I don't really, my bad, my worst habit is I don't turn off by, I use my, you know, my cell phone and I, I watch YouTube or whatever because I don't want to get up on Saturday <laughs> or I'm not ready to go to sleep yet. I'm still awake or I can't get to sleep. So I go to what, you know, outside of that, my bedroom is for sleeping. Yeah. That's what it's for. So I, I have things sort of separate. The only kind of space where things are shared is the workspace and the sort of Alan has a personal computer and this is where he buys stuff or where he plays video games. That space is the one that I'm sort of redoing right now. So have, I have, have you considered have you considered like taking that basement back? Like taking like your podcast gear out and just, you know, uh, making that into your your theater space again, and and just you know maybe um, put the 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 podcast stuff back, but like redoing that area, like making it uh, taking the bachelor stacks out, and uh, you know taking care of it. So taking care of the bachelor stacks and all that stuff is uh, is is on my brain all the time, um, and it's more so when I'm sitting down here and I look in that corner, and I go, oh yeah, I gotta gotta do that thing um but that thing also means me sort of organizing and figuring out what's in that those piles what i know is i'm junking including the stuff that's sort of in the what i call the basement part of the basement taking the old servers and literally just putting them in a pile and moving that stuff upstairs and then calling one of those junk places to come pick it up so yeah, that but I even can like literally you, yeah, you carry talked everything. About, you talked about your uh, shredding financial stuff and stuff. Oh, right? yeah. So, and like, then I like got to sit here and do care that, of that too. Like I, I've been doing that the last couple of weeks, like taking right. all the junk and like organizing stuff. My living room was still a giant giant mess. My my living room table, like my dining table, is, is just full of mm-hmm. hardware still that was in this room. But... Because I've taken it out, now my office is clear and I can do stuff again. I have to just prevent myself from 
going back to oh yeah that's fine that's fine it's yeah, on that yeah, yeah, yeah. T- table I'll take care right of it later i just need to habit. finish it i need to go and do something so, about it and actually finish it i will say there's one thing i think that is um that I was very i was conscious i was aware of but i i felt unable to do anything about it which is i felt this sort of because of the last job i felt this sort of existential gloom um, and, you know, we depressed about it or not. I mean, as a person, I wasn't depressed, but I felt maybe, I don't know if I felt trapped or not. I just yeah, sort yeah. of was felt stuck. And so I was always in this battle of needing to have Alan time decompress after work, separating mm. work from after work. And you know, that was easy when it was a physical separation and them trying not to um, l- sort of jam bully their way into my weekends or my off hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, uh, you know, my weekends, I was very defensive on how I use my time. But half my my evening is basically on Sunday is for OG. Um, and then it's further further expanded into depending on how much of my time I need to do for prep work. Um, so, you know, half my day is gone. And then the other part of it is just like getting sleep, making sure I'm, I'm, you know, sleep is important. It's a healthy component for me and that I was not getting much of it during my actual week and that getting it, it sort of um, recapturing, you know, sort of the sleep debt. Um, well, that doesn't work. <laughs> right. Well, it does work if you if you sleep half your Saturday away and yeah. then sort of doing what I wanted to do and then half my week, it, you, my day is gone on that weekend. So, yeah. you know, and it was just this extra struggle all the time for me. And I was just battling this way. And it was very much tied into sort of the stress and the workload of where I was working yeah. um, or the uncertainty all the time there. So, uh, and whether that had anything to do about me, just about the company. So I felt sort of locked and stuck. And so since I've had a separation from that experience, um, I feel unlocked. I don't feel stuck. Um, And this sort of this healthy sort of. Well, um, now you can do changes like making, redoing your desk and doing all sorts of Right. And I I just feel like now's the time to plateau and change. And I did this in very instrumental times in my life. Starting the podcast was one of those things. Um, Mm -hmm. When I was another iteration of this, uh, a much, so where I, I felt the same kind of thing where I felt stuck and it surprisingly slowed me down from doing anything the old me would not have built the desk last night it would have let all that gear and crap in the living room just sit there for another three weeks until i eventually felt like it on a saturday but last night i was like i'm gonna do it i got the final part i can do it now and so, so i sat there and i rebuilt stuff and today i'm gonna finish it up and if I have anything extra to go into tomorrow, I'll get up early tomorrow and I'll finish it up tomorrow. And so this, all this sort of getting stuff done, well, once that's done, I'm likely to start thinking about and doing the shredding and get, and start working on these things because my, my frame of mind is a lot healthier now. Yeah. So That was rec- the point of the rant. So recently we had... Uh... I, I switched over from being on call 24-7. Yeah. Well, not really 24-7 anymore, but like still I did every other week I had like was on call. And uh, because of that, because now that's handled by other people, I don't have to worry about that anymore, or at least right. I still need to worry about it, but it's like other people will take care of it first and then they will call me. <laughs> but it's like I don't have to be awake I don't have to be ready to go 24-7, 24/7 right? Yeah. And I can actually go out for a walk or do other stuff. And I think that, for me, broke the, the seal on I have to change everything. Right. So I think that's 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 been the... Uh, it's surprising how these external things, these external forces affect everything. Um, and, and so I'm on a team, and I'm not the team. Even if when I was basically the lead, uh, even when we had other members on the team, 
when they couldn't do something or something was a problem or they needed help, it all fell towards my direction. And then um, when my boss was being sort of overutilized or my bosses were being overutilized and they were super spread thin, um, they weren't going to be useful to me. They would only come at me when someone who was not managing something along the path would escalate something and then to go from call to call to call to call to call to call my actual personal cell phone and then, you know, it'd fall on me. And so all that pressure. Mm. But here, I have a team. We actually have a manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, uh, I don't have to do all the parts or be responsible for all the parts. Well, I, th- I think for me, it's it, mostly the responsibility, you know? right? So yeah. having, having that weigh on you mm-hmm. for five years, 24-7, 365, or in my case, seven. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah, but like for me, it was like the for for the most part of those five years it was me. Yeah, like like the entire company. Yeah, like depended on me being on call twenty four seven. If it broke, mm-hmm. then I was the one to fix right, it. Yeah, and I was the one to and go in and, it, and it, most see of the what time the that would is. be my boss and anywhere where he could fill in, he would. And but the the also part of that problem is he would do stuff and never tell me. Until after the fact, and he's go, oh, yeah, I did that thing on the weekend. What thing? Oh, that's why. That's why we have these bazillion emails. Oh, that's why that was screwed up. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Would have been nice to call you. Oh, I was going to tell you this morning, but you know, now we're we're talking about it. Like, you know. So, but then when oh, yeah, he couldn't do that, it would come at me. So, I think also the point is new job. I'm on a very well, a reasonably well organized structure at work comparatively and so i don't feel this sort of existential stickiness or gloom about it and so it allows me to feel feel free to have my time back now with that said i'm still in new guy mode only three weeks they're still ramping me up there's going to be a day i was doing this analogy with someone the other day they're showing me. Uh, they're showing me how big the boat is and how nice it is, and they're showing me around on the boat. And uh, all of a sudden, the boat's moving out in the ocean, and they're showing me how beautiful the ocean. Hey, look at that sunset! And when I'm waiting for the moment where uh, they're like, "Hey, Alan, you should get in the water, and test out the temperature, and get kicked in," but that moment hasn't happened yet. They're gonna walk you down and show you the septic tank and how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been into some of that already. Um, <laughs> But anyway. but the, the the point about it is that I will know that I will probably get some of those urgent calls and I will have these crazy hot fixes and I'll have a balance there. But it's not all on me when all of that happens. There's a team of people. Yeah. And so well, for me, that it's... adds to the healthy state of my brain right now. I'm more way more optimistic. And it's like it's always been here, but it's it was always been sort of stuck in quicksand <laughs> for me then, we got a new um sysadmin added yeah. to the company so them being on call was nicer for me because then i didn't have to do it anymore right so, yeah i did, did, did take like a 300 euro cut on my pay right so i did get 300 euros a month for like being on call um so i did take that pay cut but you know I didn't have to, but the mental health is, oh, is, is so much priceless. better. Yeah, and I I, I, mean, I, I did uh, did also ditch my car, so I no longer have a uh, rental car. I had mm-hmm. a, like a lease, private lease, uh, and I I still have to get the money back from them for like the last month because they they overcharged me for like an extra right. month. So I still need to get that money back. But uh, yeah, uh, well, so it it makes a big difference. I will say past experience with another job. I worked at a very big company in Philadelphia. Um, They're a name that is thrown around nationally. Um, And, you know, as a customer, I hated being their actual customer in in the house. Um, But I loved when I was getting paid by them. Um, And so I had, I would basically drive to the local train station, which, you know, with traffic in the morning was maybe 10 minutes um, at its worst. Um, and then I would get on the, the regional rails and I would go into the city and that could range anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes one way. Um, and, and then, then it would be the same thing coming back out. Um, 
and so the those those near two hours back to my day was everything mm. right and so it's it's just amazing how you don't think much about it but uh all the little small external things will will change your decision making in your frame of mind and and all of it so i don't mm. feel stuck anymore so i feel unstuck to all these ideas and these things that i just need to start kind of redoing my workspace i gotta start doing that I, okay i'm in a position a unique position right now where i could afford to do that and before i would just hold on to all those pennies because i felt stuck and i didn't know what was going to happen and the uncertainty so now and you're I'm having just... a cleaning phase or a uh, reorganization right. phase mm-hmm and mm. so I had some thoughts about what I would, might do down here for the studio, but I did some of those iterations where I consolidated already. And so now there's a bunch of stuff where maybe this corner just becomes um, more of an organized gear rack for me. I get some shelves right here and then I organize like, you know, quick bin for that cable where it's just sort of on a shelf on a rack that you can't see that's, you know, in the basement here that's just on a pile. The XLR mm -hmm. cable is on a pile with the other XLR cables. They're also mixed on with some of these mounts. Like, you know, and so I can organize that. So I will use this space more effectively when I get to the moment where I have the bandwidth, fits, like energy and human bandwidth to like work on it. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't feel like I will eventually work on it in the next 10 years. Like I feel unlocked now yeah, you, because of all that state of change. You actually so. think about it. Yeah. Well, when I did redid the uh, makerspace room, I did reorganize everything so I have bins with like stuff in it. Like I can, I now I actually have I can make use of that space, right? Because it's all in bins and it's not yeah. on the floor or <laughs> like in in well, stacks. One of the things that I did inside the uh, when I redid wiring and stuff, and I put all the mic arms and stuff in the studio, and obviously no one's here really utilizing it anymore. But I made sort of the spaces minimal. What would end up happening is over time, people would be fidgeting with things while we were doing the podcast and then all kinds of little reorganizing the headphone cables and mismanaging. And then and, and I'm going to take that one's person's. I like their headphones better. And then they would just mess up and make a messy space here. And so I wired it and locked everything down. I cable managed it. I did it on sort of the back side of it, which I can is exposed to me, but not to the people who are sitting in the chairs. And I, you know, I built everything in such a manner that made it um, difficult for them to make a messy environment. And mm -hmm. then obviously over years, less and less people are in the room. And now with lockdown, everyone's on Skype. And I feel like it's going to permanently stay that way for a long while. Um, what, what I don't... Um... I wish there was like a tool for you to do recording like on location, like like if you have a good microphone or something, like doing podcast recordings, but like having both like a centralized, like a merged recording of like the actual podcast and actually have like the individual like sound booth level uh, oh, sound, I right? Like you're saying, you can, yeah. That you can like so, sync up and have everything like... So Proper there are before you actually radio start working on it. solutions for that. Um, there are some professional things. Um, the group that does .NET Rocks or, you know, you, you might know them as also in the past, long, long, long ago past of Mondays. Yeah. Um, Carl, Carl and um, I'm blanking, Richard, um, mm -hmm. like they've written software for themselves they've experimented with. I mean, you know, they're, they're basically IT pros. Carl mm -hmm. definitely likes to fiddle. Um, so he's written stuff like that where they were using their own little like, homebrew solution where uh, people are like, oh, run this offer and I'll go in the thing. But then they find like a professional version of it and, you know, because they they have income on that stuff, they'll buy that stuff or they'll pay for that stuff. So there are some pro solutions. There are not free solutions. Yeah. Um, the I don't know where they're at anymore, but live stream um used to make and they made some pretty expensive impressive hardware uh but they also had some pretty good solutions like that where you could run even if you're just using a web browser plugin or something on on your phone or whatever you could do 
that stuff where those streams were coming back into um, a central feed yeah. and you were getting their audio and everything um, and as independent. Part of the, um, the ATM Mini Pro ISO that just came out uh, literally released as of like Friday, um, available for pre-order now, it will allow you to take all four of those feeds, including all their audio and everything, and record each of those independently. Like I can record every channel here discreetly on the, mm. on the board, same kind of thing. And so you could take one of those things and feed it in from a laptop, let's say, or I know you're you're talking more of a run some software that, you know, streams directly to a thing that you both are. And so there's NDI from New Tech, um, though I don't know if that works over the internet, but that definitely works inside network. Gear. It's it's mostly for like setting up the timing so you know which which person has like and 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 like having a good microphone, and being able mm -hmm. to capture the quality of the microphone and not have to deal with like Skype quality crap, <laughs> right? Right. But Skype but is also... Skype is fine. It's just you know it's not great for like editing because right. all the, the waveform is really 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 fucked up by the time you get to it. Right. Yep. And because of the compression, and mm -hmm. you know we we record sort of separately and mm -hmm. then you merge the files and yes there's some artifacts in there but i hear that i even hear that in some really well done professional shows i've heard that before people have the same problem they just don't handle it as well uh, well the, and, like if, if you if you look at for example tested right now they're doing their uh their weekly podcast yeah. they're doing it over zoom um right you can hear like they're it's it's not great, right? There's there's but they're not they're not doing like super professional. They always they always yeah, sat like, in a room with well, each other. But right, and what we are it. doing is not also not very professional. But like no, at least I'm trying. <laughs> like right. I, I get the I get the the source files like from each end and then I sync them up, which mm -hmm. is a, a pain in the ass. But people that are doing like that used to do like pretty okay podcast still they just recorded and never edited anything but right. like they they all, well also because it's a video podcast it's also a you know it's it's harder to edit but like the, the the even like just pure audio podcast there like you can still hear the uh like the, the thing that that reply all is doing is it's pretty good because they they I think they're doing recording on their end on each each end they're not mm -hmm. actually physically together but they still record each end except whoever their uh their phone guest is somebody is recording that separately I think one of the producers is recording that like from the Skype or from the Zoom or wherever oh the, I I think the recent one was like recorded with like pretty good audio for, even for the guest yeah I mean so. You know, like what I do for OG, it's still, it's multi-track now. Um, the only kind of problem with everyone being in the room and it being multi-track was that uh, each of these mics, these are not $400 radio mics. Yeah, but even um, if you have like, if if somebody has like an AT2020 with USB, right, that would be better than, than most of the people's sure. microphones at home. But the point that I was getting at is because of we are all in the same room, each mic is going to pick up, even though they're fairly narrow field, they'll mm -hmm. still pick up other people in the room. When you get the SM7Bs, they are very good. They're incredibly isolated, and they're they're more like if you just move away a foot, um, you can't hear anything anymore. That's how good of an isolation. That's why they're used in professional radio you know, environments. And so if I did that by five or four, um, then, you know, I wouldn't have, have that problem. And sort of the discrete nature of each everybody in the room um, recording would be very clean. Um, yeah, but where what, what I'm I mean... doing it today, it's Skype and it's me. So I have the people are talking over each other on Skype. There's nothing I can do about it, really. And they're not all going to like effectively record the same and be synced up and like i'm not dealing with that problem i'm just literally there's two channels three channels there's yeah the it'd be, it'd be cool if there's Skype. like a if you could like build a 
a podcast station of sorts, right? Like a microphone attached to it with like a way to do like maybe a Raspberry Pi that like does a does a voice uh, voice and video streaming stuff and syncs everything up, and all you have to plug in is like the microphone. And yep. then you can record like the the source audio like at a high high quality and then just send or out the, the lower quality. What? Yeah, have a button that like everyone that remotely pushes and they all make audio. I mean, yes, you could no, invent it, it, stuff the, to the do it. The thing that would sync it up. It would sync it up over the Right, internet. yeah. Right. Someone <laughs> with a remote fire would hit the trigger and then it would send the signal to all things and then they would have their local... You know, but you still have latency in that. Like nothing is going to be perfect. Yeah, but um, like the the you'd still not like as soon as you start recording, you're all recording at the same same quality. There shouldn't be like a difference in in the mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, there shouldn't be a difference in that. So you should all be in sync in time. You'd still have like 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 delays because of like the uh, the, the VoIP stuff, right? But. You know, you'd have a good quality recording. And even if you have, like, background noises and stuff, it's easier to clean that up if it's just one feed. Like, if you have one one source. Like, if you have... Uh, but if everybody is in the same thing, somebody's having some issues with somebody drilling, you cannot take it out, right? Because it's overpowering everybody else, unless you mute. But, like, that doesn't right. happen. Like, I... I I think that some of these podcasts that are out there that have gone the way of like, like they have to do everything through zoom. Yeah. They, they've become less, less nice to listen to. And there's, there's some that are like, they're good. They're recording on their own side. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Right. They're much nicer to listen to. Yeah. I, I think in general, I've always had it reasonably figured out. So a lot of these challenges i think are i think aren't much in the way of challenges they're just some things that um you have to be smart about um you have to be you have to be aware of and and combined with being aware of and mindful and smart you can do it right the right yeah, kind of headphones for like guests for people that are in there for like a, an episode or something that's hard to it's like the pipe sure right and most something. people aren't um they don't they don't have that sort of understanding um they don't have that sort of mindfulness and they haven't had that sort of learned i did this a hundred times skill right they don't have that experience so yes you're right uh there definitely are people who do this and they make money doing it uh and i think towards like again the, the you know carl and richard where they literally will send somebody a laptop yeah. Or a a box. Yeah, right? so you maybe could, maybe you should, you could maybe buy you like a gaming a with this. G- should... gaming headset off of Amazon that isn't too much, and you plug it in here and run this software, and it'll take care of all that stuff for you. Mm. And they do that, and they have experimented with that stuff because they tinker. And the people that they talk to, ninety nine percent of the time, are other professional tinkerers. Um, and so you know they get um, a a far a f- really good level of effectiveness in doing that because the kind of person on the other end of it that can help them implement that and test out and give feedback or we're all more like the same kind of person Mm -hmm. right we understand how that stuff but uh when you're when you were oprah they would have these infamous ten thousand fifteen thousand dollars suitcase custom suitcase production things that they literally had them do where they would send them to somebody's house and a producer would roll up with a suit, this like, you know, suitcase and pop open the suitcase, turn on the laptop, pull out the microphone, connect up the wireless, blah, 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 and then they would do a remote. But they put themselves together a $20,000 suitcase, you know, metal suitcase they could pop up to do a remote location. Mm. Well, I, um, I, think, I think that if, if there was a tool like this, especially in these times, it could really work. Sure. Like yeah. A, like a like a Raspberry Pi style thing with um, another project, the AT twenty twenty or something attached another to project. it. Another yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well yeah, we 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 talked about 
sort of <laughs> the separation of spaces. But yeah. I mean, is it really? It's really less about Alan Bay stuff as it's more like um, I don't know what's the it's 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 a catch up, but it's um, I don't know, re- redoing our studios, redoing I mean studios with air quotes around them. Yeah. Anyway, you know. uh, Spaceship U, Paul Mank, Link, Link, UK. It's by CGP yeah. Gray. It's good. You should check it out. Okay. Okay. I got another one. Uh, a funny video. Well, funny. Um, it's the internet historian. You might have heard of him. Um, Tales from the, the Virus. Pronounce it like an Australian would. The Virus. Right? So okay. Paul Mank, Link, Link, UH. Okay. It's, a, it's funny. It's funny. It's about like, I... basically the last half year. Okay. Then I'll I'll have to watch it uh, after I reset everything back up. <laughs> My life is all I've been disconnected since you know since I started pulling everything apart last night. Okay, got another one uh, also by CGB Gray. Uh, the Tikoi test range It's about um, a test range that was used for testing the um, boosters for nuclear um, missiles, so hmm. the minute minute men rockets. Hmm. Paul Mack link slash U L for that one. Okay. Uh, I have one. This one's a long format video, uh, but this is a guy who uh, shows you how to build a cardboard uh, robot helmet. So this is a video by uh, someone who teaches you how to build a cardboard robot helmet. Uh, Polymatic that link slash U Q. Yeah, it's like yeah. I think he might have. Uh, he might be. It's a long format video. The, the um, uh, Adam Savage does does a lot of with cardboard. Mm-hmm. He might like. He might like really like this. He might like. Probably have already seen it. <laughs> yeah, but this this guy is uh, like an artist known for doing stuff like this, and so um, you know I think Wired heard about him or highlighted you know, and so he did. He did basically like a Gundam helmet yeah yeah okay uh okay i guess it's on me uh so this is just like a a short little uh, funny i put on miscellaneous like film um color is story so if anyone wanted to understand what color grading is about this is a really good example polymatic that link slash u o as in orange um, oh, I guess it's still on me. I guess we're all clustered for me. All right, so I put this as TV because it came out this weekend, and who knows when I'll ever be able to watch it. Uh, I'm redoing my space right now. But uh, this is like the first three minutes or something from uh, the Umbrella Academy Season 2. It came out, and I noticed last night. I took a look. It's all out, all 10 episodes, so about nearly 10 hours worth of stuff. I haven't actually seen Season 1 of this. Okay, I, I was so, so done with superhero crap. It's, I was like, I don't want to watch this. It's, um, I don't know. It's one of those things where I was like maybe desperate for something and I was seeking and then I watched it. Then I marathoned all of it. Um, I can't, I can't give you what the impression or the advice is about it from season mm-hmm. one. No, it's I'll eventually watch it. It's interesting. It's it's actually, I remember it being good and liking it. Mm. Um, and so now I'm already invested in this story. So based on these three minutes, um, this is sort of like a quick recap of WTF. What do I forget? Okay, good. Right. This is now moving on to the storyline of, you know, of everything. So, so yeah. So I've got to watch season two. No doubt. I'm invested. <laughs> I Have definitely you... is a thing I recommend. It's unusual. It's not really your kind of normal superhero thing. Mm. It's so... it's it's the best analogy might be kind of X Men, but not exactly. Okay. Actually, a lot of not exactly. Just only in the um, loosest of premise ideas. So they they have powers, and that's about it. And they're um, in a school. Yeah, mm. kind of an academy. Yeah. Mm. They're okay. more like a family. Mm. So, um, and then there's some dark, dark past stuff. Um, and I, 
you know what? I was never really in the X-Men. So for me, this is way more effective than X-Men. Mm. Um, but polymatic.link slash UN as in Nancy. Have, have you watched The Boys? I don't think so. And I feel like I've heard this Ooh. before or you, you have. Sh- you should definitely go okay. watch The Boys on Amazon Prime. Okay. It's, it's very entertaining. It's very, very, very graphic. Think uh, Watchmen, like the Watchmen uh, movie. Yeah. Like um, bad superheroes, but it's like really good. It's okay. really good. I really love I it. I, I'm very much looking forward to season two. I will take that into advisement. Um, there's something else that I need to watch that I bookmarked on Amazon. I'll eventually get to it. This weekend. The Vast of gonna... Night, perhaps? Uh, this weekend is going to be putting my, my space back together. Mm. <laughs> okay. okay. So Another one. Moving, moving on again, because it's just the way we organize these things. Uh, so this is a short film. Um, Ed Short being, you know, I was a little like, I'm not sure about this at first. And then I just kept watching it. And then... I was invested in seeing how it was going to end up. Um, I liked it. And I will, it's called something like loneliness. Polymatic that link slash UP. Uh, I have a feeling if John did watch this, he probably didn't get that far into it. I skipped through it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) See, that's the problem. It's one of those where you have to, I was not open-minded to it being something worth watching and then then it sort of twisted me in a direction that made me open minded about it and then it was it turned out to be good. Hmm. Um I've got uh, some music Olaf for Arnolds. I probably butchered that uh 3055 <laughs> Paul Mac link slash UF. Yeah. Check it out. It's pretty good music. And I guess the last ends with me. Uh okay so Instant Crush uh, I guess a Daft Punk song, probably new. Uh, but I liked Pomple Moose's cover of it. It was really good. Have you have you heard, listened to the uh, original one? No, I have not. You should. It's. But I did definitely like this one, which will put me on a path eventually to go check out the original. Um, Polymatic that link slash um. Yeah, I really like the original one, but I, uh, Pomple Moose one, it's just you know. I, know. I know you're you're like. It's not the same. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't know what it, what it is, but like for some reason, like um, the staring into the into the camera the whole time of the singer, I don't know. It's just it just creeps me the fuck out. Sorry. Sometimes but. I don't. I spend more time listening to the videos than I am. I'm watching them. Yeah. Um, and I know that's really kind of bad of me as someone who occasionally makes makes things for people to watch but for me it's it's part of my sort of routine youtube subscription box yeah right of stuff so i will listen and i will be doing other things Hmm. um and i'll be letting it run you know and so i'm not really looking at natalie dawn's eyes as she's singing back at me well there was a video so i watched the video Right. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. It's not it's not it's not great. But if you watch the original video, it's like it's got like like a whole story behind it and then this this is just mm-hmm. the performance. I know <laughs> like, that sometimes uh, there are covers where people are like, ah, it's just not like the original. And I no, know that's, you are I, I know definitely I know that. I know that, that but with like that punk. <laughs> it didn't give were... it didn't give anything to like it didn't make it better. It didn't like make right. it too much different but like i don't know it was it a just, good cover it, it did not what work i liked me. about it um and so that's kind of why i bookmarked it and it was recent mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah yeah so uh alan they can't can't find you on twitter.com slash chase uh yeah you, should, <laughs> you shouldn't find me don't bother don't bother to go to twitter.com slash c-h-a-e-s-s don't because i I make like, I don't know, at most, maybe I make one actual Twitter post every three months and uh, I might respond to some people 
every maybe once a month. Mm. <laughs> it's like nothing there for you to see. Well, for quality content uh, with regards to uh, not arriving packages and other uh, complaints in Dutch and English, uh, yeah. tw- twitter.com slash webdevi, W-E-B-D-E-V-I-E. For feedback, you can reach us at podcast of Polymatic Media and please send us some email. It's very empty, that mailbox. Uh, for me, the music uh, is by Seunz, which you can find at Polymatic link slash EK. Our Twitter's the Polymatic. Our website is Polymatic Media. And I hope you tune in next time. 